Hello, I really enjoyed your 7075 welding video. I recently bought some special welding rods made for welding 7075. It's made by a company called Metal LI. Would you be interested by chance if I were to send you some, make an extension video to see if it actually works? I sure would. Thanks, Samuel, for sending it to me. Let's get right to it. Holding up pretty ugly versus the rod that I normally use on other metals, which doesn't work on this. See how much prettier and shinier that rod is though, but in my previous video we already went over that and it's not strong, it cracks really easy. Okay, first impressions, pretty nasty looking stuff when you weld it, it leaves all those pepper marks on top. I even turned the wave balance up too to try to clean that out, it didn't seem to help that much. Versus like 53-56 rod that looks nice and clean, but this stuff cracks real easy on 70-75, it's not strong at all. Fifty-three, fifty-six. See how that just snapped right off? Looked like it was biting in good, but it didn't make a good bond. Okay, I'll try just this little piece of that new filler rod. So that one broke off pretty easy too, but it broke off right in the middle of the filler rod. It bit in and bonded good to both of the 7075 sheets. Okay, that one feels pretty strong. Let's put it in the vise. And for all you cutting edge nerds out there, you can see where it's liquefying in. Looks like there's a little crack splitting out right here at the base where the fill rod uh, didn't fuse in. I'll do a couple more welds and burn in deeper after this. Okay, so with that little crack in the middle going this way, it's gonna make it crack easy, so I'm gonna go this way first on this test. Just to see how good this rod bites in. Fuses. Okay, not too bad. Works a lot better than any other filler rod on 7075 that I've tried. But yeah, see right there, I pulled back on it and that split super easy. Round two. Kind of reminds me of a welding through anodizing, how filthy it is. So this is the one where I just welded one side and I tried to put a lot on it and get it hot so it burned through more. You can see it burns through probably about halfway. You probably could have got a full penetration weld doing both sides without beveling it. But the problem with that is it got too hot. So the whole backside cracked, so that's a fail. So you don't want to do that. Okay, that crack on the backside is right here. Okay, that was super easy to break off. 
that was too. So don't do it that way. Don't try to get it nice and hot on one single pass. This one's got a pretty decent size weld on both sides, not quite as big and as hot as that first one. No cracks on the back side. That might have been the sweet spot on temperature and amount of filler rod. Still broke right down the edge of the weld though after several bends. Pretty brittle stuff. This is just a piece of 7075 that hasn't been welded. We'll see how brittle it is before it gets heated up. It's a whole lot close call. I almost dumped my third $900 camera on the floor and ruined it. So what I was saying is it's a lot stiffer before you weld it and heat it up but still fractures pretty easy it's just the way it goes you know general rule of thumb is the higher the number of aluminum the stiffer it is but the more prone it is to crack when you do you do bend it round three This time I'm trying a lot smaller weld and letting it cool down between passes. Okay, I welded that side, let it cool. Welded this side, I'm gonna let that cool. Then stack up some more weld on each side and cut and test. Okay, this first one, pretty cold weld, colder than I would normally do on like 6061 or 5052 sheet, just single pass single pass on each side. And I let it cool down before the second pass completely. This one's a three pass on each side, trying to keep all the beads pretty small. Center pass, low, and then high. Letting it cool down all the way before the next pass. So hopefully this is a little bit of a lesson for all you cut and etch nerds out there. This one, fused in like this and it cracked right here outside of that so this you know this could have been huge and then you can look at a weld and say oh yeah it burned in great good strong weld but you don't really know until you actually bend test the thing depends on the fill rod you use depends on how hot you get the part or if it's too cold there's just so many variables that you don't get a full understanding just by doing a cut and etch and looking at it to see how it liquefied in so thanks again, Samuel, for sending me this rod. I appreciate it. Hopefully everybody learned something. So quick recap. This stuff does weld 7075 a lot better than any other rod I've tried. It's not a pretty weld, but it's a lot stronger. I would not design any part to be made with 7075 that needs to be welded. If somebody brings you a 7075 part that needs to be repaired, I personally wouldn't do it, just for peace of mind. Maybe if it's lawn art, say, yeah, but if it breaks, don't come back. I told you it may or may not hold. And then definitely don't try to do a weld repair on something where safety's a concern, you know, where it could cause, cause injury or harm to somebody if it did fail. Thanks for watching.